Welcome to the Rappahannock Charge Virtual Worship for this Sunday morning, January 16. We are recording this broadcast earlier this morning, and hopefully you have found us. And as we navigate something new as the storm rapidly approaches. PPR will meet Thursday to evaluate ongoing in-person or virtual worship for the upcoming weeks and expect an update email on Friday morning as to the results of what we discuss. Uh, next Sunday, January 23rd, Pastor Steve will bring the message. And we have a few birthdays this week. Dwayne Seiler, Mary Myers, Judy Burke, Tommy Letty, and Dottie Johnson, and Sandy Thompson. Uh, so Dottie and Sandy have uh, birthdays uh, next Sunday. So... Our ladies uh, Bible study on Mondays at 7, they are meeting as, uh, via Zoom, as is the Sunday morning uh, Bible study that Steve leads uh, is also available uh, on Zoom. And the other in-person studies are suspended until we get back in person. And with that, please join me if you have your uh, downloaded bulletin for our call to worship. Come to the feast. God welcomes us here. Come to be fed. Christ nourishes us with love. Come to be transformed. The Spirit recreates us anew each day. And please join in our opening prayer found on your screen. <clears throat> please join me in praying. Living water, flow through our worship. Nourish us with your loving presence. Draw us ever closer to you, that our empty vessels may be filled, and that our dry souls may be transformed into fountains of love, life, and joy. Amen. And also, please join me in our prayer of confession, also found on your screen. Let us pray. When hope runs dry, lift us out of despair, O God, and fill us with the waters of renewal. When our efforts fall short, forgive our failings and reclaim us with your promise. When the weight of worry holds us down, lift us up with your comfort and show us the way forward. Transform our lives as you once transformed water into wine, that we may flow with abundant love. Transform your creation and your people as you once transformed a formless void into this good and fruitful earth. In hope and gratitude we pray. Amen.
Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. The scripture reading today comes from Isaiah chapter 62, verses 1 through 5. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet till her righteousness shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. The nations will see your righteousness and all kings your glory. You will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow. You will be a crown of splendor in the Lord's hand, a royal diadem in the hand of your God. No longer will they call you deserted, or name your land desolate, but you will be called Hephzibah and your land Beulah. For the Lord will take delight in you and your land will be married. As a young man marries a maiden, so will your sons marry you. As a bridegroom rejoices over his bride, so will your God rejoice over you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please join me in re reading the responsive Psalter found on your screen. And we will start with the response. I desire to follow your way, O Lord, my God. Continue your steadfast love to me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains. Your judgments are like the great deep. O oh Lord, humans and animals you save. O oh God, how precious is your steadfast love. All people may take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light do we see light. O oh, continue your steadfast love to those who know you and your salvation to the upright of heart. I desire to follow your way, O oh Lord, my God. Continue your steadfast love to me. Amen. Excuse me, let's start again now that we have the mic on. Our gospel reading this morning is from the second chapter of John, verses 1 through 11. On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, 
each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it, had, it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Transformation. Starting with one thing and molding and shaping into something entirely different. Jesus transforms the water into wine as the first sign or miracle reported in the Gospel of John. What is the point of Jesus turning water into wine? First, we understand the circumstances and setting for this miraculous transformation, a wedding feast. In that day and time, a Jewish wedding feast lasts for seven days. Friends and family celebrate for a full week. Running out of food or wine disgraces a family to the point of shame for the rest of their lives. So running out of wine is a very big deal. Second, we understand that Jesus is present with his disciples to enjoy a wedding celebration of a young couple with family and friends. He has not begun his ministry from the standpoint of signs and miracles. Third, we hear when Mary tells Jesus of the problem, Jesus responds with, what is that to you and me? As if to say, what do you want me to do about it? My hour has not yet come. What hour is Jesus talking about? Up to this point in John, we have heard the beginning exhortation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God, and the Word became flesh. And then John the Baptist bursts on the scene, so fiery is his preaching of repentance and turning away from sin that the people wonder if John the Baptist is the Messiah. John the Baptist proclaims, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, announcing the fulfillment of the Isaiah prophecy. The baptism of Jesus and the Spirit descending, the calling of the disciples, and then the wedding feast in Cana where Mother Mary takes charge. Now imagine what must have gone on. The wine is gone. Imminent doom and shame for the family and the couple will always be associated with what comes next. Mary tells Jesus that the wine is gone. Jesus seems to be rather unconcerned with his response of, what of it, Mom? My time is not yet. Time for what, I wonder. We know that Jesus receives baptism. We know that Jesus calls the disciples. So how could this opportunity for Jesus to burst on the scene 
seen through a miraculous transformation of water into wine be something that Jesus wishes to avoid. It is not yet time. Time for what? Jesus knows that once his ministry begins, there is a finite countdown to the conclusion. The human side of Jesus we can identify with. If you know something is coming, if you know the uphill struggle that you will face will be long and hard, if you know that health matters or financial matters or emotional struggles are going to be extended. Our human nature seeks avoidance or soothing through becoming immersed in negativity, immersed in mindless activity, immersed in perhaps destructive behavior. We are human. And not only can we identify with the reluctance of Jesus to face a course that will lead to pain and suffering, we can take heart in following Jesus and his response. All we hear in the scripture passage is Jesus's seeming reluctance and then Mary's absolute confidence that Jesus will save the day. Mary responds to Jesus by telling the servants to listen to Jesus, and he will tell you what to do. Jesus responds as any obedient son will do by listening and fulfilling his mother's request. Jesus directs the wedding servants to draw water into those large stone purification vessels, six stone jars meant to hold water for purification rituals that hold up to 30 gallons of water apiece. That's 180 gallons of water. Jesus proceeds to miraculously transform this water into close to 200 gallons of the best wine ever tasted, an overabundance of provision for the wedding party. This gift to the wedding party, this gift of love avoids shame. This gift of love lays the foundation of the gift from Jesus to us. In our lives, Jesus provides an overabundance of love, peace, joy, and purpose where the things of this world begin to affect us less and less, where the things of God become more important. Jesus provides us assurance that loving God with all of our strength and soul and mind and and loving each other and our neighbors as we love ourselves, the two greatest commandments. And Jesus begins his ministry willingly, obediently, knowingly, that the cross will be the end game for his ministry. I cannot imagine what the humanity in Jesus felt knowing the pain and suffering he faces as he begins to perform signs, begins to teach the twelve, begins to share a humility and compassion to those in pain, those in need of God's transforming and miraculous power. 
This world today needs this transforming and miraculous power now more than ever. We are meant to be here for such times as these. You are meant to be here for such a time as this. God has a perfect plan for you and for me. Now we don't know the how of our final days here on earth, but we know for certain that one day we will have one last morning where we awaken. And then our earthly home will be no more and our heavenly home will come into our sights. If you are listening to this now, there is still time. Time to embrace the love of Christ. Time to transform and become more holy. Where your faith becomes your life in everything you do and everything that you are. The miracle of transformation of all of our hearts is right there for us to embrace. Jesus provides the way. Jesus provides the quiet example of humility. Jesus provides the ultimate gift. Jesus turns the water into wine behind the scenes. He does not seek a spectacle or draw attention to himself. His act of compassion for the wedding couple avoids everlasting shame for them and what would be the talk of the town for generations in running out of something as simple as wine. Jesus has compassion on us. Jesus desires relationship with us. Jesus gives us hope. The simplicity of a loving Savior welcoming us in with loving compassion. No matter what we have ever done and no matter how much we respond to that love, it seems a little one-sided in that Jesus forgives. Jesus loves no matter what. Jesus saves. Jesus transforms. The first miracle of water turning into wine has much deeper meaning than saving the day at the wedding feast. Turning the water into wine at the beginning of Jesus' early earthly ministry, sharing bread and wine at the end of his earthly ministry, the ultimate gift of the resurrection, the ultimate gift of the Holy Spirit that miraculously transforms our lives, miraculously leads us to becoming more holy, miraculously provides for our salvation. We do not have to endure the pain and suffering that Jesus did. We do not have to walk through the streets physically carrying a cross to our death. We do not have to die in horrific fashion on that cross. But we can accept the gift of the cross. We can obediently and willingly take to heart what Jesus did for us. Out of that gratitude, we can strive to deepen our faith through study. We can seek opportuni opportunities to serve. 
we can look for ways to embrace lovingly our neighbors by finding a need and filling it. Maybe you know someone who needs encouragement. Maybe you know someone that needs transportation somewhere. Maybe you know someone that needs heat or firewood. The opportunities for us to serve are endless. The opportunities to love are endless. The opportunities to miraculously transform both ourselves and the world are endless. We can do all things through Christ who is strengthening us. We can put into practice all the things we know to do to truly accept the gracious gift of God through Jesus Christ and respond with action to make disciples for the miraculous transformation of our world. Amen. Please join me in this response to the word found on your screen with a time of silent and reflective prayer in the middle. And I invite you to reflect on the powerful transformation that Jesus can have in our lives. Which jars are running empty in your life? Where are you yearning for Christ to turn still waters into flowing wine? Let us reflect silently together. Healing Christ, renew us this day. Transform us into miracles of your love that we may be the miracles you would have us to be. Amen. This week... Uh, uh, some of you emailed me some re prayer requests, which will, uh, I will go over now. And apologies that uh, we are not live right at the moment. So uh, during this week, if you have something on your mind or prayers to lift up uh, next week, whether we be virtual or in person, uh, I invite you to email me uh, those requests. Nancy McBride uh, asked us to lift up Rita Forsyth, her sister-in-law, who had a bad fall and broke her hip and now has COVID 
as well. So we pray for her recovery. For Marcy Kitts, uh, relative to Polly and Bud, um, with COVID in Winchester Hospital, and she has had a rough week. For the Fox family, Alan continues to progress positively in the ICU, and they hope he's starting to eat food at this time. He's been off of the ventilator for some time, and they're hoping that he gets to the step-down unit uh, very soon. Uh, Judy and Richard Burke's grandson, Jake, um, their daughter, Ashley's son, uh, soon to be four years old, uh, was diagnosed with COVID. Also, Judy and Richard's son, Richie, uh, down in Florida, also with COVID. So we ask for prayers for the family and for healing uh, at this time for them. And today especially, uh, we will have some silent prayer and I invite you to pray for the nurses and the doctors that during this surge are just overwhelmed with fatigue and exhaustion and trying to cope with their jobs. And many of these doctors and nurses work shifts of 12 hours when it, with, in and of itself, a 12-hour shift, as many of you know, is exhausting. And with the intensity uptick of their jobs right now, with all of the beds being full and the emergency rooms and ICUs, with COVID patients and uh, and then just navigating the rest of emergency care just provides for a very difficult and exhausting life right now. So I will invite us to pray silently for the nurses and the doctors in just a moment. And also prayers for safety during this huge storm affecting millions and millions of people uh, throughout our, our country right now. So with that, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, we lift up to you Rita Forsyth, Marcy Kitts, the Fox family, and Alan, little Jake, and Richie. And Lord, we ask for a special blessing of comfort and helping the doctors and the nurses with their fatigue and allow them to get rest. And Lord, we just ask for your healing that this virus may burn out as is pre being predicted now so that things will become more manageable for our doctors and nurses and frontline workers. Lord, Put your healing protection around those first responders that know not what they are going to get into each day. All the volunteers and the firefighters and uh, the police and those that serve us in so many ways. We ask for your protective wings to be around them. Lord, we ask for protection during the storm that we all may make good decisions in our travel plans and be careful as we go through this time of weather events. And at this time, I invite you all to pray for our doctors and our nurses.
Lord, we also ask you at this time to transform the gifts that we return to you of our time and talents, tithes and offerings, that they may be gifts of abundant life and ever-flowing love for a world thirsting for your grace. And in gratitude and joy, we pray that these offerings will be a blessing and pleasing to you. Amen. And at this time, we will honor our Lord Jesus Christ with the prayer that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> And please join with me in our responsive benediction. Go forth and proclaim the good news. God calls us by name and fashions us for glory. We go as people transformed and redeemed by Christ. Go forth and live the good news. The Holy Spirit blesses us and seals us in God's love, we go as people blessed by God, that we might be a blessing to others. Amen. Amen.